Bisogna usare il microfono? L'ho copiata, credo. Aspetta che controllo se ve l'ho copiato. Credo, eh? Sì, sì, l'ho copiato sul desktop. Uh, ecco, lo prendo in mano. Shall we start? 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 Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I will try to provide you a quick overview of the general characteristics of the center, the general features, particularly with respect to research, and then my colleagues will provide you with more detail about the uh, teaching activities of the center. So what is the CIMEC, the Center for Mind-Brain Sciences? It, 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 it was started quite recently, in March 2000. Seven and the aims of the center is to study, to investigate the functioning of the brain from both a physiological and pathological perspective. And obviously, apart from research, uh, uh, the aim is also to educate the next generation of interdisciplinary research uh, in uh, uh, neurosciences. Uh, the, the, the center is an interdisciplinary center incorporating faculty from different departments of the University of Trento, psychology, physics, mathematics, computer science, uh, and uh, philosophy, particular philosophy of mind. And there are also biologists and other people working at the center. And the center is a multicultural center. You can see uh, we are about 140 now. Uh, with uh, 36 uh, principal investigators, about 46 uh, uh, postdocs and uh, people working on temporary basis, uh, uh, about 40 PhD students, uh, and about 20, 22 uh, people uh, who are part of the administrative staff and technicians. Uh, more than one half of the fellows are from abroad, you can see here, some representative uh, uh, countries, and about one-third of the principal investigator, that is the faculty of the centers, are uh, from, uh, from abroad. 
Uh, I will describe briefly the structure and the laboratories of the center and therefore the, the research activity which is carried out at the center. Uh, um, so the organization of the center has, uh, so to speak, core business, which is associated with uh, uh, human neuroimaging. This is located geographically not in Rovereto but in Mattarello, which is uh, south of Trento, sort of midline between Mattarello, between uh, Rovereto and Trento. And uh, in these labs, the neuroimaging labs, we have a scanner, a four Tesla scanner, a MEG, a, a magnetoencephalographic uh, setup and several other setups to study the brain, like the TMS, uh, the eye tracking, and other uh, paraphernalia of human cognitive neurosciences. Uh, then in Rovereto, we have the EPL labs, uh, the Experimental Psychology and Psychophysics labs. Again, several types of uh, equipment are used mainly to study uh, the behavior of human subjects. So we have EEG, electroencephalographic procedures, eye tracking lab, kinematics, multisensory lab, and psychophysics labs. Uh, then we have some colleagues working in the area of uh, computational linguistics. This is the CLIC lab. They are interested in particular in the study of semantic and encyclopedic knowledge in communication and the study, uh, the study of adaptive interfaces. And they are obviously interested in the relationship between uh, this semantic and, uh, uh, knowledge and, uh, uh, and what is happening in, in the brain. So they collaborate with people that make use of neuroimaging techniques. Uh, then we have the people working on the more wet part of the center, the more biological part, the ACN group that work with animal models. We have a variety of animal models available from rodents to insects to birds, and we look at the behavior of these uh, subjects and also to the, uh, to the neurobiology with classical techniques like histology, microscopy, and so on. Then we have the more clinical part of the center. The center is uh, interested both in the normal physiological functioning of the brain, but also in the uh, pathological conditions. And so we have a center for neurocognitive rehabilitation, so-called chairing. And there are about uh, 200 people, patients, that are under treatment each year at the chairing. And the aim of the center of the uh, chairing is to understand the clinical nature and the neurological basis of cognitive disorders caused by brain damage. Uh, there are then a few labs that are run together with other um, uh, important research center in the provincia which are not part of the university, but are a uh, research center directly funded by the provincia. One is uh, the uh, two labs uh, run in collaboration jointly with the Fondazione Bruno Kessler, FBK, a neuroinformatic lab and a computational cognition labs. These are labs mainly devoted to the integration of computer science, neuroimaging, and also uh, devoted to, uh, to, um, uh, to have system and services supporting people with cognitive disabilities. So uh, these labs work in strict interaction with the chairing. Uh, another uh, joint lab is the INN lab, which is a lab uh, run together with the uh, Fondation Edmund Mack. Edmund Mack Foundation is a research center in the provincia, mainly devoted to investigation of biological uh, and, agricultur uh, and agricultural research. Uh, uh, these people are interested, for instance, in studying the um, nervous system of, of insects that are pests and are important for agricultural crops. 
So in these labs, we investigate using, for instance, two photon microscopy, the activities of uh, uh, neurons in the brain of these teeny animals like uh, uh, honeybees or bumblebees and so on. Uh, finally, we have a um, field uh, uh, station about three kilometers from Rovereto. Um, and this is uh, the Ethology and Evolutionary Biology Lab. It's in a nice and peaceful area uh, called Sperimentaria, where animals could be studied and observed in completely natural condition. There are also some labs uh, for fish and bees research with some hives and also some aviaries. Uh, uh, an important collaboration from the point of view of research of the CIMEC, the center, is with the Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia, the Italian Institute of Technology. This is a major research center based on Genoa, but the IIT also has a satellite which has been located in different universities. Um, and one of the universities which has been selected for this collaboration is the University of Trento. So we host a center for neuroscience and cognitive systems. These are colleagues of IIT who are mainly interested in the use of neuroimaging techniques uh, for investigation of and psychophysics, uh, uh, for investigation of human cognitive processes, and also they have a, another scanner, another fMRI machine for investigation of small animals in particular. They are working with mice and other models of prominent diseases like autism, schizophrenia, and so on. Uh, 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 I, didn't, I do not discuss the educational part of, of the center because my colleagues will cover the master and the PhD activity of the center. Um, just to mention, obviously this is quite boring for you, but the CIMEC was, has been very good in this year in, in, in making research, as, as, being, as it can be shown from the number of publications and the number of citations. But I, I, I want just to mention one aspect that uh, you could easily grasp. I think that the main agency for funding of science in Europe now is the ERC, the European Research Council. And, the Europe, and, and we have been able to be awarded more than uh, uh, 8 million of, of, of euros for research at the center. And just to give you a, 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 an idea, consider that more than one half of these ERC grants uh, 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 um, have been obtained at the CIMEC uh, uh, with respect to the overall number which has been awarded to the University of Trento. So we have been quite successful in obtaining grant for research. Uh, but we are also interested in collaborating uh, with uh, other colleagues all over the world. And this is done both with workshop, specialized workshop that uh, convey in Rovereto uh, research from all over the world uh, in the area which are of interest of, for the center, namely uh, perception, attention, multisensory perception, animal cognition, and obviously human neuroimaging. And apart from this specialized workshop, we also try uh, to, uh, uh, to develop uh, communication for the general public in Rovereto and in Trento. And we have several activities. One is the uh, Science Café, uh, typically in the spring, which are very successful activity. Other activity, more formal, a series of conferences called Neuroscience and Society with the presence of quite prominent uh, uh, science writers like, uh, for instance, Piero Angela. And, most, uh, and also very important, the uh, uh, activities in collaboration with the local Museum of Art, the MART, just in front of this building uh, in the area uh, in, uh, uh, associated with visual perception and uh, art uh, and the brain. And finally, we hope we also have an ethology day every year in, at the end of spring uh, in which the, uh, the children of the town are allowed to visit the labs and to see the animal and to interact and to learn something about the natural behavior of animals in a natural environment, sometimes also 
in bad weather, as you can see. Uh, yes, I forgot another activity important is uh, the participation together with the CHIBIO, the Center for uh, Molecular Biology, uh, to the Olympics of Neurosciences, which are an, uh, 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 mm, uh, uh, an event uh, uh, for the students of the secondary school uh, to promote the knowledge of uh, neurosciences in the, in the school. Uh, just a mention about the future, right? uh, uh, as I said, uh, we are at present uh, geo geographically located in different places. Uh, part of the labs are in Mattarello, close to Trento. Parts are here in Rovereto, in different parts in Rovereto. Uh, but we hope, uh, hopefully in a very short time, to be able to have a unique and unitary uh, location for all this, the CIMEC that is expected to be Manifattura, uh, which is in the south of Rovereto, and uh, we will have three large buildings dedicated to the center, one for the biological part together with the IIT, this big building, another one for the neuroimaging, so moving the scanner and the other labs from Mattarello to Rovereto, and another one for the clinical part. So, thank you very much for your attention. I, 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 I apologize in advance. I will be not able to stay with you because of other duty today, but uh, my colleague will provide you all the information, particularly the one associated with the teaching activities of uh, the center. Thank you. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. And uh, as you've seen, we have a series of presentations, for example, the one you just saw from the director of the center to give you some overview of the research opportunities here. But of course, uh, one of the main reasons why you're here is to have the opportunity to uh, interact with the students, current students, and faculty here so that we can answer your questions and we can give you an idea of what it uh, would be like to study here at the master's or PhD level. So I encourage you, uh, as you're watching, to think of questions that you'll have for us. Uh, right after the set of presentations, we will um, have a reception, and all of us will be available there to answer your questions, and hope we have a chance to meet you during the day. I'm David Melcher, and um, I'm going to talk briefly about the master's program. So I just want to point out a few things uh, that we think are very important about the master's program. Uh, and then later today, we have a chance to talk about uh, some more details. So specifically, um, when talking about the master's, uh, today I want to talk a bit about the way in which our master's integrates research and teaching. So there are a lot of materials online. You can read about the specifics. But uh, just to emphasize the um, teaching and research aspect and how they fit together. So in terms of teaching, um, we have uh, two tracks, as you've seen in the materials, one based on cognitive neuroscience, one based on language and multimodal interactions. And the idea of teaching, um, particularly from the cognitive neuroscience track, is to provide um, theories and methods in the cognitive and brain sciences. And the idea is that we talk about what are the ideas, and just particularly given that people come from a diverse background, try to talk about what's exciting about uh, what's going on in the mind and brain sciences now. 
but we also emphasize teaching of methods. In other words, rather than sitting there as we're all doing now and listening to someone talk, the idea is that you're here to do research and to learn through doing as opposed to the lecturing style that you've mainly had uh, as a bachelor student. So we cover some of the basics of cognition um, just because people come from a diverse background and try to bring everyone up to date with what's going on now in terms of cognitive psychology, cognitive neuroscience, study of language, memory, perception, the mind, thinking, and so on. We have courses and hands-on courses in neuroscience and in neuroimaging, and the idea there is to understand. We've all seen, the, or in some cases even made, the pretty pictures that you see in the newspaper with areas of the brain in different colors, and the question is, why uh, do we do that, and how do we do those kinds of experiments? Computational methods. Uh, the cognitive and brain sciences are becoming more and more uh, a field where uh, the traditional cognitive psychology and neuroscience interact with computational disciplines, engineering, computer science, and so on. Then research methods is an important uh, aspect of science. So the reason why uh, science is so exciting and interesting to all of us is there's the chance that today you could wake up with a great idea that no one else maybe has thought of before. And what we try to do is give you the tools to take that idea and create experiments or models that then you can use to test that idea. And so that's one of the things that uh, is a focus of the teaching. And as I said, uh, the focus is to get you in the labs as soon as possible. Uh, and classes involve hands-on training, but also people are encouraged uh, to quickly uh, start spending time with the research groups in doing their own projects. So that's the teaching part. In addition, uh, as I said, the teaching and the research go together. And uh, one of the things which I think is quite exceptional about our masters is the high quality of the theses which are produced by the students, many of which are submitted for publication um, and uh, are presented at conferences. Here are some uh, examples. And we really encourage people to um, become a professional as soon as possible, no longer just someone who reads about studies, but someone who creates new scientific knowledge, presents that at conferences, uh, presents that to the other uh, students and faculty here, and so on. And as you've seen from all of the slides before, we have really uh, amazing research facilities. And they're not just there for you not to admire, but they're there for you to use. Another aspect which is very important to us is the way in which this master's is useful to you. And the idea is that we want to prepare you for careers in academia, industry, education, medicine, and so on. And so far, we've been very successful. Um, so in the last survey, about 90% of people who do, who've done the master's are working um, in one of those areas. In terms of doctoral schools, um, we've sent uh, master students to uh, the best doctoral schools in the field um, from all over the world. In addition, uh, others have decided to go uh, directly into um, healthcare or software design, robotics design, um, designing of uh, equipment. These sorts of things are also an important aspect of the masters, and so we're trying to also, of course, teach practical, uh, useful information. Yes? In education? Yeah. Okay, so, um, well, in terms of studying cognitive uh, systems development, uh, there's sort of, you can view different aspects. One is, um, how do people learn? So if you understand how, 
people develop cognitively and how they best learn, then that can be used to uh, design better courses. And then um, also in terms of learning disabilities and uh, people who have difficulties in learning, uh, obviously the cognitive and brain sciences focus a lot on those problems. So I, I mention education because some people, for example, are able to come from an education background, do a master's, and return to doing education. Other people have done research projects um, having to do with schools or with, uh, for example, the experience of children with learning disabilities um, and things like that. So we certainly like to have the theoretical part, and, um, but the applied part is an important uh, aspect as well. And for the thesis project, for example, in some cases, people collaborate more with these uh, educational aspects. So there are a few things that make the masters fairly unique, one of which is the diverse and international teaching faculty. So I just took a quick list from a recent email that I sent <laughs> to the people <laughs> Teaching next year, uh, you can imagine how easy it was to organize a meeting with this many people. Uh, just to point out um, two things which, given my experience seeing master's programs elsewhere uh, in Europe uh, and in the US, first of all, there are a lot of us uh, who you would be exposed to who all give you some sort of idea about what we're interested in. So it's not one of those masters where there's really just two or three people doing all of the teaching. Um, in addition, you may notice just from looking at the names that uh, there's a wide diversity in backgrounds. And that means that we've done our <clears throat> undergraduates and PhDs and research uh, all over the world. And so we bring that breadth of perspective to our teaching. The second thing which makes us unique, again, is that, as I mentioned before, it's not just to have you sit there and listen to lectures. The idea is to get you as soon as possible in the labs doing research. And so what we call classes a lot of times really are um, laboratories or training to help you um, to do research. And finally, the thing which makes us unique, I think, uh, is people like you which is that we have a diverse and international group of students coming from different backgrounds, um, engineering, philosophy, physics, uh, computer science, um, lots of other fields. In, so not just psychology or neuroscience. And that is a challenge for us because we might start a class and some people will have already written perhaps uh, their undergraduate thesis on memory, and other people think memory is something that you buy lots of to stick into your computer. And we have to engage all of you and provide lectures that uh, work for everyone. But I think that's also exciting, and I think for the students as well, the chance to see people from different backgrounds and to uh, learn something new, whatever background you're from, is exciting. So next, uh, my colleague Marco Baroni uh, will talk specifically about the language and multimodal uh, interaction track. Okay. So hi everybody, I am uh, Marco Baroni. I'm here as the coordinator of the language and multimodal interaction track of our master. Um, the uh, idea of this track is to have, uh, to give a preparation which has uh, a bit of a stronger emphasis on the computational aspects of uh, cognitive neuroscience. Uh, we are uh, in very exciting times in which we are having like a lot of progress in understanding how the mind works, how the brain works, but at the same time also a lot of technological progress with things like the web really changing the way we uh, live, the way we interact with each other. And uh, of course uh, uh, there are uh, many connections uh, uh, between these two aspects, the uh, understanding the human mind 
and uh, uh, working with machines uh, uh, because uh, it is becoming a very uh, concrete perspective uh, uh, to design and develop uh, uh, machines uh, that are uh, human-like uh, in important respects. So, say, uh, not so far in, um, away in the future, uh, we can uh, envision uh, search engines where you don't have just to type keywords, but you can actually ask a real question, like you would ask uh, a friend, or where you can use uh, um, images to interact uh, instead of just words. And uh, uh, this is exactly the kind of topics uh, that uh, the researchers uh, that uh, uh, teach in our track of the master focus on, uh, uh, and the kind of problems that you will learn uh, about if uh, you study in our, uh, if you study in the track. Um, the students that uh, uh, choose uh, language and multimodal interaction do uh, take uh, a fair number of classes together with the students in the uh, cognitive neuroscience track, so they learn about the foundations of uh, cognitive science, of neuroscience, of neuroimaging, and so on and so forth, but then they also take uh, uh, courses in topics such as artificial intelligence, computer vision, computational uh, linguistics, uh, and uh, uh, so they develop a very interdisciplinary kind of uh, uh, background, which then can lead both to uh, uh, further studies in uh, uh, PhD programs, pro programs that might be in cognitive science, but also maybe in computer science, uh, or also the possibility of uh, uh, working for high-tech companies that are nowadays uh, investing uh, uh, quite a lot in uh, uh, human-like uh, uh, technologies. Uh, and I guess a nice characteristic, so many of the aspects that David mentioned for the master in general are also true of our track, so the heavy hands-on aspects and uh, really doing research together rather than having a strong uh, division between the persons who teach and those that uh, uh, who learn. Uh, and also a characteristic of uh, our track, which I think is uh, very nice, is uh, also the people who come uh, tend to come from a very mixed uh, background. So we had uh, computer scientists that now are enrolled in uh, doctoral problems, uh, to doctoral programs uh, in, uh, uh, in neuroscience. We had the neuro people that studied psychology or neuroscience uh, uh, that are in their bachelor degree and that now, uh, through our track, uh, uh, switch to a more like artificial intelligence or uh, um, computer science kind of uh, uh, program. And uh, uh, so I guess one aspect uh, of our track which I think would be uh, attractive for uh, some of you uh, is this possibility of really a bit like looking around and uh, uh, acquiring a varied background uh, and then in this way also being able later whether you study or you decide directly to uh, go uh, to work uh, uh, to do uh, something uh, interesting maybe more creative uh, than uh, what you could do with other more traditional backgrounds and uh, uh, I guess that's all I have to say for now but I'll stick around uh, for the uh, lunch meeting so if you have questions just ask them Okay, so for those of you who are interested also in the PhD, and this also of course applies to people who come here for the master that might see in the PhD here or somewhere else uh, a possible continuation of your activity, uh, my task today is to give you a quick overview of how we organize the PhD at CIMEC. So my name is Francesco Pavani and I coordinate the PhD program here at CIMEC. Um, I'm not going to repeat many of the aspects that uh, have been already emphasized for CIMEC and for uh, the master, that is, all the availability of techniques, 
and the possibility of interacting with a truly international context here at CIMEC. Uh, instead, what I'll try to uh, emphasize is the way in which we think the PhD program should develop. Uh, and uh, this is something that is, I think poses some difficulties, because when you start a PhD, you are no longer a student in a sense, but you are still a student. So at the beginning of the PhD program, you're, you're still a student has to learn uh, a number of uh, important aspects about how you do research in that specific field and the competencies that you must have in order to be able to become an independent scientist. At the same time, we strongly believe that when you start a PhD program, you are already a young scientist at the beginning of her or his career. So it's very important that you try and think of the PhD program as something that is already your first step into a possible science career. So sure, you're going to have a supervisor. For sure, the supervisor will have a great impact on what you do and the project that you're going to develop. That's typically how things are. However, we strongly uh, invite you to consider this phase as a, a real different phase. It's not just being a student in, again, a training phase, is something else. When you start uh, a PhD program at CIMEC, every year you will be faced with a uh, uh, possibility of choice uh, among various uh, um, uh, topics. So uh, for the 30th cycle, um, and we're going to publish uh, the um, call for this cycle shortly, um, uh, the topics will be animal cognition, computational neuroscience, developmental, uh, development, language, learning and motivation, neuroimaging method and analysis, perception and action, thinking. There will be a link on the web page that points to uh, a more detailed page in which each of these topics is further detailed with specific examples of projects that are offered in, in these domains, and specific example of potential supervisors that you can have if you choose a specific project. Now, this is the moment when you have to be an active uh, a researcher already in, in, in searching what these people do, but also search what are your true interests, what is your motivation, uh, and what, what is the question that already is a bit in your mind. Uh, every one of us has uh, aspects of uh, the human or animal behavior that uh, intrigue, intrigue us more than others. And it's time for you to really think about these aspects and see uh, which are the ones you really want to pursue. Um, as I said, one way to uh, introduce the, the school, the program, is to uh, give you an overview of how we organize it. So the program is a three years program. Uh, I don't know if you can read it, it's a bit small, but I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through uh, this. Uh, this is a, a, a very synthetic uh, Gantt diagram that we organized uh, um, to, to, to represent the activity that we do every year. So basically, what happens is that when you start the PhD program at CIMEC, um, you will have an, an advisor uh, assigned, but also, and this is very important, we uh, introduced this a couple of years ago and we noticed that it really works very well, you will have an oversight committee assigned. So a group of scientists, typically three people, one is the advisor and two of the people from the faculty, but can also include people outside the faculty, that will follow you throughout the PhD program. This is very important because uh, sometimes it's very important to, to go beyond the interaction you had with your advisor and, and hear the, the, the voice of experts, uh, if, even within the same center, that have seen your progresses through time and can actually tell you where things are uh, going very well, where there might be problems, where you have overlooked some ideas. So it's this type of uh, constant uh, uh, discussion is very important. And for this reason, we uh, immediately uh, assign uh, an oversight uh, committee. Uh, 
the other thing that happens at the very beginning is that the student and the advisor work on a study plan. Now, the problem of diversified background uh, exists, of course, also in the PhD program. Uh, the difference is, however, that here we have some more margins for flexibility, and the way we uh, organize the study plan is we, we carefully worked to identify what are the priorities for us uh, that we think that every single student at CIMEC should, um, uh, and the courses that every single student at CIMEC should follow. Now, these are not necessarily courses like sitting in a class, uh, but can be things like active participation in the life of the center, okay? So these kind of things also constitute uh, part of your study plan. But of course, you may have arrived here with thinking that memory is that thing you buy in the shop, and so you need more competencies in the domain of psychology. And therefore, you can organize your study program in such a way that you get this uh, knowledge that you need, okay? Um, once all this is approved, then you basically enter into what is the main phase that is going to guide you throughout the PhD program, and that is your research project activities. You basically will be uh, a CIMEC to, to run a research project, your own research project. As I said before, for sure there will be a great contribution from the supervisor, and some of these research projects uh, actually are part of funded projects, so it's very important that you, you actually fully understand this. At the same time, you are the person that will have the project in the hands. And ideas are kind of a, uh, a, a flexible and elaborate things that, that grows as you, as you work with it and change and find new directions. Um, there'll be training activities, and these will be the courses for which you organize your study plan. But of course, these training activities are lab meetings, workshop, colloquia, research seminar. I'll say more about colloquia and research seminar in a minute. But the point is, participating in the life of, the, of a, such an active center as CIMIC is one of the things that uh, you sh must not miss in your uh, PhD experience. Now, by the end of each year, uh, you will have um, you will be requested to, pre to prepare some report on what happened uh, in each year. So the first year, uh, this will be a report on the activity that you have done in, in the first year, and if possible, uh, already a sketch of how the next two years will develop uh, in terms of the project that you have been working on, you started to work on. Uh, the oversight committee will discuss this report with you, and then, uh, by the end of the year, uh, what we call the IC committee, that is a, a committee that will uh, examine how was um, uh, your um, activity during the year, will evaluate and uh, will propose uh, an admission to the second year or not. Uh, and then finally, the doctoral program committee, which is the whole staff, will uh, approve uh, uh, the, the decision. I'll move more quickly now. Uh, when you go into the second year, at the beginning you will uh, have another duty which is very, very important. At the beginning of the second year, you will have to delineate uh, the thesis project in details in front of the other side committee, and you will receive feedback for that. In the meanwhile, you will continue with the research project activity, training activities, and by the end of, towards the end of the second year, uh, uh, you, will, you, 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 you should be able, you must write uh, an important theoretical review of the field you have, you're working on. Effectively, this is already the, 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 the introduction of your thesis. Uh, but uh, although you surely have already, by this stage, developed your ideas on, on this aspect, it's very important that at a certain point you sit down and write clearly what you think about uh, the theoretical foundation of your own project. And again, there'll be a discussion with the uh, OC uh, of this uh, uh, literature review, and there'll be uh, the decision to admit or not to the third year. When it comes to the third year, uh, at this point, you surely have developed your project to a large extent.
extent, uh, and we ask you to provide evidence of uh, the fact that you do, didn't just think of the project within yourself and your advisor and the oversight committee and the school, but your aim here is to make this project uh, and the results of this project as widely available as possible to so write them up uh, and present them. Uh, again, we provide feedback on all these activities and by the end of the third year, uh, you should have uh, uh, a good four months to write the thesis. Now, uh, colloquia, uh, colloquia are what we consider the, the most uh, uh, prestigious uh, um, seminars here at CIMEC. The logic is not just being prestigious, it is that type of seminars that can leave seeds of ideas, even if they come from domain that are very different from the one that you're interested in. So you're interested in perception, well, come and listen to a distinguished uh, senior scientist speaking about computational linguistics, because that's when your mind can open and you can find new direction for your, your own project. So this is the idea with which we think of colloquia. But of course, in addition to the colloquia, uh, there are the research seminars, very many research seminars characterize uh, weekly ac week activities at CIMEC, lab meetings and journal clubs of various uh, group uh, at CIMEC, the workshops that have already been mentioned that are uh, an amazing occasion to uh, interact with international scientists locally here, uh, a PhD day that we, in fact the students primarily organize every year to, uh, in uh, September, October, and a regular weekly meeting that we uh, call the brown bag meeting because we, we do it at lunchtime, but it's a Friday CIMEC meeting in which we basically update everyone about what's happening at CIMEC. And I'll stop here. And uh, uh, importantly, so i also be around, um, and uh, uh, Lea Mercanti, who's the person who, ad uh, the administrator, for the CIMEC uh, PhD program will also be here to answer uh, more uh, organized related questions. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Katia Tentori. I'm a professor here at CIMEC and I'm also the person in charge of the orientamento activities. And uh, these two students are our students of our master program, Beatrice and Andrea, and uh, they are uh, working in the orientamento activities as well. This means that you can email me, you can find my email under the people link on our web website, or you can email them or ask them during the lunchtime, they will be around about questions, about the admission, about the fellowships, about the quality of life in Rovereto, or uh, the employment rate of our students, and so on. And uh, you can ask them also questions that you don't want a professor to hear about. So question from a student to a student, they will not report to us the questions. So feel free to ask them any important question you think uh, you want to ask. And, um, uh, let me say just a couple of things that I think are important. First of all, we, uh, for the master program, we have two deadlines. One is at the end of March, the other one is uh, around June, July, you have to uh, look uh, on our website. There are 40 positions overall, and uh, um, so you need to apply and there is a selection. And uh, uh, the selection criteria are uh, your um, uh, motivational letter up to, I think, 30 points out of 100, uh, your uh, CV, your curriculum studies, uh, study arms, and uh, uh, also some recommendation letters of professors you have been working with in the past. And uh, uh, you need to know like, English. Uh, you need not to be perfect in English. But you need to be 
able to understand English because all the lessons will be in English, the books will be in English, and so on. And uh, um, you, we don't have uh, uh, limits in the sense that you can apply from each uh, kind of uh, previous uh, uh, course of the laurea. For example, you can be uh, you have you, you could have done three years in math or in psychology or in philosophy. This is why, because cognitive science is a, an interdisciplinary kind of research, okay? And of course, uh, if you have done three years in math, maybe you don't know anything about psychology. So you will require to learn about psychology. We can help you at the very beginning of uh, our master program to give you uh, some books uh, to talk to you and to help you to fill the gap. Okay, and so on. If you come from psychology, maybe you're not trained in math or in logic and so on. So we will have some basic courses and you will be required also to fill the gap. And uh, uh, what else? Um, an important thing, uh, thing is that uh, uh, at the end of the program, at the end of our, our master program, you will not be a psychologist. Okay, you will study a lot of psychology, but you will not be able to be a clinical psychologist. This has to be clear, okay? So our master is uh, research-oriented, okay? So you will not be able to work in a hospital as a psychologist, okay? Unless you have also a master in psychology. Is this clear to everybody? Okay. And uh, uh, we have a, a, an impressive uh, um, rate of... Uh, uh, students who can find unemployment within two, three months after our, uh, their degree, okay, more than 90% of them, but uh, also keep in mind that uh, uh, the great majority of them work as a PhD students. So they are trained to, to be a scientist and they found a job, okay, uh, as a PhD student. Okay, so if, if, if is this what you are interested in, is a great trend. But if you want to be a clinician, it's not your trait. So, okay. And um, uh, there are a lot of fellowships at the University of Trento. So you could be interested in these. You can ask them, okay, about uh, these fellowships and other questions that I don't have in my mind now. Okay? Okay. Do you want to add something? You will be around, right, during lunch time? Okay, cool. Can you explain me a little bit about the CISA program? What is the CISA program? Uh, what is the... I, it's, I've read that there is a fellowship about the CISA program. That's a good question. Um, I ended up not adding the slide about uh, funding. <laughs> so. We have an agreement with CISA uh, in Trieste, and uh, what happens is there's a separate, separate application for that program, and there's a selection which is obviously made uh, also by CISA, uh, which students are involved. And the idea is that you would spend the first part of your master's here, um, doing classes and, and so on, and then you would do your research thesis uh, with scientists at CISA. And so part of the fellowship, of course, includes the fact that you would need to be in Trieste in order to, uh, to work there. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions, then uh, there should be a reception just across the hallway, and we'll, hopefully all of us will be there, and thank you again for your attention, and see you in a few minutes.